You know, there was a time when the can-can was considered so scandalous that the police would sometimes raid the dance halls where it was performed. But of course, that's when ladies didn't show their ankles, much less their underwear. Well, today, of course, the can-can is as familiar a symbol of France as, of, I don't know, the Eiffel Tower. So how did that happen? I mean, it's gained enough respectability that six nights a week at the Cabaret Paradis Latin in Paris, tourists and families come to see it perform. And once a month, the club even offers a workshop for anybody willing to spend two hours and about $100 to learn. It's a dream, a dream of a little girl, to have the robes, the clothes, the maquillage, the coiffure. The choreographer is Marie-Laure Philippon. C'est une, une danse qui est très très gaie et, et qui donne beaucoup d'enthousiasme de crier. Et... Voilà, qui est très française. Actually, the word can can is old French slang for malicious gossip, maybe something like talking trash. And, and nobody's sure why they called it that, but the origins of the dance go back to the early 19th century. It was the beginning of the Napoleonic era of empire building a century in which France seemed constantly at war, at literally dozens of campaigns. So with that in mind, look at the choreography. I mean, this is the chase. On fait des chassés comme si on chargeait. See, the cavalry. And then there's right shoulder arms. C'est comme quand les militaires portent, portent le fusil et c'est le port d'armes. And this is the battement, which means beating. So think of a line of marching drummers. And maybe the can-can provided a sly commentary on the times. And by the 1890s, it was so popular, you could find it in dance halls all over Paris, like the most famous of all, the Moulin Rouge. It's an era that's inspired dozens of movies, like Baz Luhrmann's Moulin Rouge. There was Cole Porter's musical Can-Can, starring Frank Sinatra and Maurice Chevalier which is about the best that can be said for it. See, I told you, they never rest the waiters. And in 1952, there was Moulin Rouge, directed by John Huston. It starred Jose Ferrer as the artist who would create the indelible image of the can-can, Henri Toulouse-Lautrec. Lautrec was barely 30 and an unknown artist when he painted this poster as an advertisement for the Moulin Rouge. A congenital disease had stunted his growth, and he hid in a world of dance halls and bordellos. He was well acquainted with the woman in white. Her name was Louise Weber, but she was known as La Goulou, which means the glutton. She was the highest paid entertainer in Paris at the time and considered the greatest can-can dancer of all. So skilled, it said she could kick the hat off a man's head. Lautrec's poster, well, <laughs> it wasn't really about her dancing. Just ask the curator of prints at the Portland Art Museum, Mary Weaver Chapin. The 1891 Moulin Rouge poster made Toulouse-Lautrec's reputation overnight. Although today the image might even seem a bit banal, we've seen it on coffee cups, mouse pads, on tea cozies. You know, at the time, people really understood it for what it was, this very dirty joke advertising the Moulin Rouge. If you notice her dance partner in the foreground, he's sort of a shadowy figure, notice where his thumbs are placed. We've got one thumb that's pointing directly between La Galou's legs, and the other thumb is rather, um, positioned and rather erectly near his groin. It was scandalous. It was seen as outlandish, as um, a slap in the face to the moral bourgeois order. But if the can-can was sort of a 19th century pole dance for men, for women, it represented something much more profound. You see, when the Moulin Rouge opened in 1889, it was only about 20 years after Susan B. Anthony had published The Revolution. It was just that, a turning point in the history of women's rights. And her message soon traveled from the United States to Europe. And so when this poster was plastered all over the walls of Paris, with this image of La Goulou lifting her skirt and kicking her legs in the air, well, French women saw a defiant, independent woman. Maybe today the can-can seems like a quaint reminder of a bygone era, but Louise Weber, La Goulou, is still remembered by the French as the woman who helped spark a revolution with the can-can. 
C'est presque MLF, c'est presque une danse féministe. 